Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Emily. If you're here for my recent little stint on shorts, I'm glad to have you and I'm glad to share with you the rule book. Uh, this is my rule book. It has my name on it. Uh, if you're worried that I am not being truthful, this is kind of like all the proof you'll ever need. I am actually lucky to have this rule book because I went a very long time ago and they no longer allow students to take their rule books home because this could happen. So I'm super excited to read it to you. I'm not gonna read every page. I started my video reading every page and there's just a lot of kind of like silliness. So I'm gonna take you through the discipline page because it's most interesting. And then I'm gonna note to you um, kind of like some of the general rules that I think are fun to read. It's a big packet, which is why I don't think we can go through every page and some stuff is just a waste of breath. So we're gonna start on the hottest topic and that would be discipline. Also, long story short, we had rules for everything in this program. So there are specific rules about every topic you can think of. There are, there's a whole section on Christian service appointments, like if you needed to see the doctor, which didn't really happen. If um, church etiquette, youth group, how we were supposed to act when we went to these places, um, our clothing inventory. We'll go over this as well. So let's just go ahead and start with the good good. That would be discipline. So these were all the different disciplines. I'm going to hold it. If you'd like to read it, you can go ahead and screen grab it and um, save it for later. Uh, and if not, I'll read it to you right now. So we're going to start by the first discipline, work. A work discipline is an extra work duty that is at least one hour in length, and it is given for any infraction that merits an immediate action. Number two, cheating. Any student found to be falsifying schoolwork in any manner will be requi required to start the course from the beginning. So if you cheated in school on the computers, they would actually start your whole grade over. So not only would you have to take that course over, but you'd have to you'd have to start the whole grade, every single class in that grade. Scripture writing. This was the most common, and we called these sentences. Scripture writing um, was a scripture a scripture writing discipline assigns a report on scripture that is relevant to the issue being addressed. It deals with interpretation, meaning, and the purpose of the scripture, as well as a biblical application to the student. So what we call them sentences were paragraphs. And if you had a big, if you made a big infraction, the paragraph would be longer. If you did something really bad, it could be a whole page. And if you did something small, like you forgot something and you left something out, it would be a shorter paragraph. And you would write that 75 times and your hand would hurt so bad. And um, the, the, the big kind of problem and the reason why girls hated this was because you had to write it in your free time. So you couldn't write home, you couldn't receive mail, you couldn't kind of like have a moment, you had to write just constantly um, from the moment there was free time in the morning until right before you had to go to bed. Silence. Students who continue to struggle with problems associated with their conversation are put on silence. Silence includes talking to any other student, eye contact, or gestures. So sometimes if you were talking too loud or if you saying if you were like being negative in general, they would say, Emily, go ahead and go on silence, and you would have to just shut your mouth and not look at anybody until they took you off. And sometimes they forget to take you off, so you just stare at the staff and just hope they remembered you. Okay, next up is relationship restriction. Um, this, we, we call it R&R. &R. Relationship restriction is given to a student that is engaged with another student in a relationship that is not edifying to either student, tends to be negative, and or delays the progress of the other student. So what would happen was, if you made a really close friend, or if you were negative with somebody else, which sometimes you didn't even have to be negative, you would just be close to someone, they'd put you on R&R, &R, they'd separate you dorm, so they'd move you out of your dorm into a different dorm, and you would no longer be allowed to be friends with that person, look at them, etc. Sometimes two students couldn't be placed in other dorms, they had to stay in the same one, so you would live your life alongside this person, for a year and a half, but you wouldn't be allowed to look at or talk to them. 
condoning. This was a big one. Uh, when a student condones the actions, conversations, and behaviors of another student that does not comply with the values set forth at TC and does not personally confront or give notice to a staff member, this is a compromise of Christian values. After 30 days, new students are held accountable. Condone means to overlook or forgive by treating an offense as harmless or trivial. By saying nothing, one gives their silent approval. Something that I was always scared of was getting in trouble for condoning, but I never got caught. So basically what they're saying is if something is said or somebody does something that breaks a rule and you don't personally tell on them, then you will suffer the same consequence if they get caught. So sometimes, um, so an example of how this happened, once there was a group of girls hugging in the bathroom and we weren't allowed to touch each other. And uh, one girl knew about it, but she wasn't actually hugging anyone. She decided not to, to stay out of trouble, but she was disciplined in the same way as the rest. And it was a really big discipline. It was 30 days loss of privileges. Um, you can't write home, you can't see your family and your pass gets pushed back a another two months. So instead of seeing your parents every other month, you wouldn't see them for four months then. Loss of privileges. Privileges are exactly what they say and they can be lost. Phone calls, mail, and passes can be taken away. This is used as an extreme form of discipline when other disciplines don't seem to work or when a student refuses to cooperate with the program. So loss of privileges was a pretty big deal just because you lose every little joy that you had. And there were very little joys here, so you really, you know, you wanted to keep them. Program extension. A student's program can be extended or starting over or started over for violations such as but not limited to continued disrespect to staff and others, threatening behavior, lack of progress, um, stealing, lack of respect for the program, running away, or conversation about running away. So program extension, aka months added, they would keep you there as long as they liked. So if you didn't become a Christian, if you didn't excel in Christian growth, they would add you time. You didn't have to be actively bad to be kept here. You had to always be showing signs of improvement. And a lot of girls would lose their visits for not being kind of like excited enough in the church activities and whatnot. So it was pretty messed up. There was one girl they kept for like three years in the program. Uh, just because she wasn't showing enough growth. She wasn't actively doing anything bad, but she just wasn't good enough to them. Lights out. Students are expected to remain in their bunks after lights out. An occasional, an occasional trip by yourself is allowed for the restroom. However, students caught out or reported to be out of their bunks for any other reason will be disciplined as follows. First time, loss of privileges. Second time, one month added third time program restart. So they would also, if you were really bad, they would start your program from the beginning. So if you've been there six months and you're being really bad, they would start it over. You've been there zero months now. And then that alludes to this, running away will result in starting the program over. Students enrolled in less than a month will have two months added to the program. This was the most devastating one and it was a reason why many of us didn't run away. Talking about running away, regardless of intent, will result in two months added to the program. So if, if you even mention it, even like on, on my first month, I asked my sister, my big sister, um, about running away or I'm just going to run away. And she said, don't you ever say that. It's taken really, really seriously. And um, the girls actually did not say it because everyone was so afraid of having to stay longer just for a word coming out of your mouth. So that's the end of the types of disciplines. I'm going to go to another interesting topic, and that would be mail. I'm going to let you screen grab it because I'm not going to go over the whole page, but if you want to take a look, it will be available to you through screenshot. So I'm just going to go to the guidelines for the letters. So the letters that we wrote home, um, we had to write them once a week. And we can only write our parents or our siblings who lived at home, or we could write our grandparents after four months. So our letters were not allowed to refer to staff, other students, or their families. So say you made a nice friend here at your new school in your new life. You're not even allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to name any names. 
Uh, there's no conversation about old friends, boyfriends, siblings, friends, the old life, etc. You're not allowed to talk about any old memories, um, any friends. If your parents mention your friends in a letter to you, um, the counselor will either throw the whole letter away or they will block out large portions of your letter so you'll just never see what they said. Uh, sending mail through family members while on pass is not allowed and will result in time added to the student's enrollment. So you can write your family notes. Anything on paper had to go through your counselor to be read and then mailed out. They read every single letter. They listened to every single phone call. So a lot of the times we were suffering and we had nobody to tell because if we started to tell them in our letters, they would throw the letter away. And if we started to tell them on the phone call, they would cut the line. So we were in Alabama on a cult compound being brainwashed and we had no release because we couldn't speak to each other for fear of getting disciplined and we couldn't call home um, without being listened to. And then the counselors would intervene. If we were being negative on our calls like more than once and they had to keep cutting the line, we could lose our calls entirely. Back to the letter rules. So there was no nicknames, use, use full names at all times. So if your sister or brother had a nickname, you weren't allowed to say it because that could mean you could be talking about somebody else or something. Incoming mail that is deemed inappropriate by staff will be returned to the parents with a note explaining why. Students will be notified when outgoing mail is inappropriate and given an explanation. The letter will then be discarded. It's actually not the truth though, because they say that they'll tell you if they throw out your letter, but they just throw out the letter. They don't let you know. Um, I had a very rude awakening when I found out my siblings never got any of my mail that I sent out in the beginning. Okay, let's talk about this one. Here's just like a, another random page of miscellaneous rules. You can screen grab if you like, but I want to talk about meals. Everyone is required to eat what is served unless dietary restrictions are noted in the student's file. Complaining about meals or wasting food will result in sweet out. No sweets or desserts for one month, including pass, birthdays, special events. Um, because students are provided with ba three balanced meals daily, supplements such as vitamins are not needed. Um, so they wouldn't allow us to take vitamins, but I didn't see a fresh fruit for like six months once. We didn't eat fresh fruit or vegetables. Sometimes we had canned fruit and canned vegetables, but we didn't get fruit or veggies. So these balanced meals did not, did not exist. When I arrived to the program, the first breakfast I had the next morning was a honey bun with milk. And, and it's just not good for you. It's not good for you. I mean, it's not like the worst thing that could ever happen, but I was pretty much into my health at that time. I was 15 and I was like really diet conscious. And that was very upsetting me to have to eat an entire honey bun for breakfast and drink a whole carton of milk. If you don't drink the milk, you'll get on sweet out. Okay, so students must receive permission to bring their plates and trays to the counter and must promptly return to their seats. So they would call us up by dorm and we would line up and we'd carry our tray to the garbage can. And oftentimes before we would dump it out, there'd be a staff member at the can making sure that all of our food was eaten. If say we had some kind of chicken or pork with a bone in it and, um, and the staff were watching us and we didn't eat like a gross part of the meat or something, they would send us back to our seat and we would have to eat it. Like pieces of fat, uh, like grizzly gray meat, they would send us back to our seats. It was disgusting by the way. Let's, let's go on to medications and prescriptions. All medications and prescriptions will be kept in the staff office. Uh, they'll use discretion, when to give medication, no diet or health supplements, no teeth whitening. All medications will be reported in the student medical chart. So this doesn't really go in detail, but if you came in on an antidepressant, they would take you off of it. They might wean you off, but a lot of the time, most of the time, you would, um, you would be off of your meds, cold turkey, and they didn't believe in self-help, they didn't believe in mental health, they didn't believe in prescription drugs like um, for ADHD, 
or depression or anxiety, you were not allowed to have it. Okay, so let's go to the next. Music. No secular, non-Christian music is permitted while in the program. This includes time with family on pass. No radios, boomboxes, Walkmans, no tape CDs to be brought to the center. So we weren't allowed to listen to any music that wasn't Christian. So when we got out, I was there for three years. When I got out, I didn't know any of the popular songs. I missed like three seasons of music. And it's not a big deal, but it's one of like the little gripes that I have. Like some songs I imagine that I still don't know because they um, hit the charts and then disappeared by the time I was out. Okay, now we're gonna talk about this kind of random page. If you wanna screenshot, you can. And this is kind of about our uh, relationships with other students. So the appropriate student relationships. Students are to be reminded that other students, even though they are sisters in the Lord, are not natural relatives and physical touching is not allowed. Students will not engage in physical contact such as, but limited to, hugging or embracing, touching one another's hair or body for any reason, lying or leaning on one another's lap or shoulder. Horseplay is not allowed ever. This policy is between staff and students as well. There will be appropriate times when a group hug is appropriate and staff will always provide the proper time and direction to the group. So for 15 months, we weren't allowed to hug. Um, we weren't allowed to touch. We weren't allowed to touch other people's items. So if you dropped a pen, I was not allowed to pick it up and give it to you. There were so many little tiny rules like this that aren't even listed in the book that it was just so much to keep track of. Sometimes you would break a rule and you wouldn't even know that it was a rule and then you'd get a one hour or have to write sentences. So it mentions that at some point there will be an appropriate time when a group hug happens. I've only seen maybe one or two hugs like that, group hugs like that, in my whole time there. So that didn't really happen. Okay, we're going to go over conversation. Uh, this is going to be the last page I share with you today because my throat hurts. So if you want to take a picture, go ahead. And now I'll read it for you. Okay, so conversation, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment that it may give grace to those who hear, Ephesians 4.29. Uh, following the principle of this verse, students will not talk about street life, drugs, sex, or use slang or curse words. You are here to focus on the new life. There is no conversation in regards to boyfriends or other friends in general. We were not allowed to talk about our friends from home, and you would get sentences if you did. All speech and conduct should be that which manifests Christian love, compassion, and consideration for others. No talking in foreign languages. English will be used at all times. No yelling, shouting, or anything like that. Moderate tones always. Refrain from gossip. Do not repeat rumors, stories, or information about other students or staff. Do not listen to when people talk about others. Address each other with respect, no nicknames. Um, all staff will be addressed as Mr., Miss, or Mrs. When responding to staff or another adult while in the Teen Challenge program, students will always respond with sir or ma'am. Note, while at Teen Challenge, students are not allowed to interact with males for any reason, whether out in public or in church. Interaction includes talking, initiating a response by manner or gesture, or responding to manners or gestures of someone else. So sometimes we'd be going into church and uh, a guy would be holding the door open for us and there was like a ton of us walking in lines one at a time. And every girl that passed him had to look straight forward or look, had to look straight forward or look down and just pretend like he didn't exist. And then in regards to um, how we had to call each other Mr. Miss or Ma'am, when I was 17, they converted me into like a staff because I was still in high school and uh, I ended up staying way beyond what I was supposed to stay. And so they turned me into a junior staff. And then at 17 years old, other girls who often were older than me had to call me Miss Emily. 
And there are some girls that still refer to me as Miss Emily. Like, I can't shake it. It's horrific. So no matter what age, if there, if somebody wasn't in the program and wasn't, like, at your peer level, you had to say Miss to them. So we'd have interns who were, like, students who graduated but stayed longer, and they would be referred to as Miss or Ma'am. Okay, you guys, so that wraps it up. There's more pages in this book, so I might want to do a part two. Um just to cover because there's a lot more going on, but my throat hurts and it's getting late. So I'll do a little part two probably. And then if you have any questions about any of these rules, or if you want any more information about this program, uh, just let me know because I'm happy to share it with you. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you for the next one.